In an exclusive series on NFL brain injury settlements, first we heard from two-time Super Bowl champ Leonard Marshall. His settlement claims have been denied. Last night, certified neurologists told us they recommended in favor of claims that were also either appealed or denied. And tonight we hear the story of veteran defensive lineman Amon Gordon, including the day he learned he had lesions on his brain and what happened after that. Here's News Nation's investigative reporter, Rich McHugh. I grew up watching Walter Payton, wanted to be like Bo Jackson, period. After attending Stanford, playing in the NFL was a dream come true for Amon Gordon. He spent nine years as a defensive lineman in the NFL, ending his career with the Kansas City Chiefs in 2012. God blessed me with certain talents, you know, to, to be able to, you know, move forward and progress and make a living at the same time, in the same breath. It uh, certainly does take a lot from you, too. He began to realize just how much, though, in 2013, when, out of the blue, he had a panic attack at a restaurant. Just I didn't know what it was for my heart to be like jerking. He called me in the bathroom and he said, I cannot breathe. And I'm like, what happened? He's like, I don't know. I'm like, what do you mean you have a panic attack? Like you played football like in front of thousands of people. Why are you having a panic attack at a restaurant? So that was kind of the beginning. The panic attacks continued. He saw a team of doctors and had an MRI. He called me on the phone in the car crying and he said, my brain is gone. I'm like, what are you talking about? He goes, there's lesions all over my brain. It's bleeding. It was bleeding when I was playing. I go, what do you mean bleeding when you were playing? He said, when I was playing in Kansas City right now, my brain's been bleeding. He goes, I have so much damage. What was that like when you visited that doctor in Chicago and he told you there was bleeding on your brain? Well, just kind of breathtaking, you know, to kind of actually see. Gordon was diagnosed with early onset dementia. Every year since then has been downhill for his condition. I mean, sensitivity to light, attention span, get irritated, forgetting to pick up our son from school. Dr. Mohammed Ahmed, a board certified neuropsychiatrist at the Kaizen Brain Center in San Diego. He's been working with Gordon for over two years. So in your clinical judgment, Amon Gordon has traumatic brain injury? Yes. Mon Gordon has dementia? Yes. In the testing that you've done, you've seen a cognitive decline. Correct. Uh, what does the future look like for Amon Gordon? I would say bad. No doubt about it? There's no doubt about it. I'm watching a person that I knew and fell in love with who is changing and becoming a person that I don't know. This damage has taken so much from him, so much, and fighting on top of it, it's just another huge layer of stress on our family. I mean, we shouldn't have to fight this huge institution when it's clear that this man has major cognitive damage. I live with him. Gordon submitted his claim for his share of the NFL concussion settlement. In 2017, Chris Seeger, the attorney who negotiated the settlement on behalf of the players, said players with a legitimate diagnosis prior to the settlement effective date would get paid. Because if you have a diagnosis of a neurocognitive or neuromuscular problem before that date, and it was done by a board-certified legitimate doctor, those diagnoses will be honored in the settlement. Has that been your experience? No. Absolutely not. That couldn't be a further thing from the, the truth. truth. Board certified neurologist diagnosed you with dementia, right? Correct. He was approved for a $1.5 million award in 2017. All of a sudden he was audited and they wanted five years of medical records. The claims administrator audited his claim. In that process, the AAP, a team of doctors working for the claims administrator, reviewed his claim and supported it. But then the NFL objected and filed an appeal. Roxy Gordon wrote an impassioned letter to Judge Anita Brody, who was overseeing the entire case. What did he say and how did she respond? I pleaded with her to take a deeper look into what's actually going on in this settlement that something's not right and I received no response at all. A special master appointed by Judge Brody ruled in their favor that there's clear and convincing evidence that Gordon's diagnosis was not generally consistent with the qualifying diagnosis as defined in the settlement agreement but they did not disclose what evidence they were referring to and still have not. How do you make sense of that? I can't. I can't. I don't get it. It's not a game. It's not a mystery. I have real physical data. 
Gordon objected and appealed to Judge Brody. Judge Brody denied the appeal. In her denial, she wrote that Gordon was awarded due to an error in the claims process, despite the fact that he plainly did not meet the medical criteria for a qualifying diagnosis. But there is no explanation as to what the error in the claims process was, and what she refers to when she later writes, the court is troubled by the events leading to this objection and has looked into the matter. The Gordons believe the error to which Brody refers is that race norms were not applied at first. The NFL in June said they would end the controversial practice referred to as race norming, a practice that made it harder for black retirees to show a deficit and qualify for an award. In a statement to News Nation, the NFL says it appealed Gordon's case because his cognitive test scores were well above the settlement agreement's clear and objective score thresholds for the requisite neurocognitive impairment. But the Gordons say that's because race norms were applied, and his scores rose after they applied the settlement algorithm. I, I believe Amon was race normed, and I believe they they never had intentions on making good on his claims. I believe that the NFL can care less if he has brain damage or not. For a matter of fact, I don't think they care about the large percentage of the players that are suffering from cognitive damage or what it's doing to their families. So the Gordons appealed to a different court, the Third Circuit, in hopes for transparency and answers to why his claim has been denied. Their case seeks a ruling for the specific reasons his claims were denied. You are seeking transparency, basically. You're just trying to figure out exactly why your case has been denied. Yes. Period. Transparency. We're trying to figure out what happened, because we were never given a, a, a valid reason for denial. The Third Circuit canceled oral arguments in their case this June, and last week, one of the judges just recused himself from the case without comment. In my case, there's some really strange occurrences that are happening. I just don't understand the opposition. If this settlement is generally created for us, why is there such opposition? Why is it such a secret? Who's being who's being paid? Release the data. News Nation has asked Chris Seeger, class counsel, for the data on awards. Who has been paid and how many were white, how many were black? Seeger has not provided that information. I'm fighting the way I'm fighting because it's not just about Amon and it's not just about black men retired players with brain damage. It's about all of them with cognitive damage that played football in the NFL. There's no color when it comes to brain damage, you know? Brain damage is brain damage. And what I would like to see is everybody treated fairly in this concussion settlement. That's what I would like to see. Rich joins us now, and it sounds, Rich, like there's a lot riding on this new appeal that the Gordons have made. Where does that stand? Absolutely. This case is, is integral to the whole thing because they've appealed to the Third Circuit. The Third Circuit has power over the court that is presiding over this whole, ca whole case. And if this court, the Third Circuit, rules in their favor, it's going to compel the current judge, Judge Brody, to open up their case and possibly a lot of other cases. If they rule, if this Third Circuit rules against Amon Gordon, uh, he's told me he's going to take, take the case all the way to the, to the Supreme Court. You know, I think uh, Roxanne, his wife's comment, will mm -hmm. probably resonate with a lot of people. And that is an overriding question from 30,000 feet. Why does it appear the NFL is fighting so hard against so many of these claims that have been diagnosed by respected doctors? These players have given so much, it seems like they would just say, we need to pay this and, and reward them for that. Speak to people who've been dealing with this for the greater part of a decade, and they say it's about the dollar value increasing and the data points increasing that points to more and more former NFL players uh, having problems with this. And they, they just don't want that data out there. Relatively speaking, though, expensive to the NFL, considering how much money it no. makes. And how many players, that were, were there 2,000, I think, who have filed for this, you said? There's 20,000, who over 20,000 who've registered, 3,000 who've, approximately 3,000 who've actually submitted a claim package, and just over 1,000, I believe, have been paid. Now, the important to note, a lot of the people say they, they haven't submitted their packages because th there's this lockdown mm. on this case and they're, they're waiting till it gets revamped or, or, or broken up. A lot of things to be determined. We'll continue to follow it. I know, Rich, and you'll let us know how these claims end up and if they do end up getting reinstated after the changes that have been made. Fascinating report. Rich McHugh, thank you. Thank you.